the history of horse racing, in essence, is the history of the horse. Loved by some, vilified by others, and commonly referred to as the sport of kings, horse racing, and in particular thoroughbred horse racing, has given us volumes of historical figures. The connections of these horses from the owners, trainers, exercise riders, to the grooms, all make key components in the success of a racehorse. But if you go around many tracks today and you ask the grooms who their hero is, who they admire, a lot of them will tell you one name, and that is Eddie Sweat. This is the grave of Eddie Sweat, beloved groom of Secretariat and River Ridge. This is where everything ended for Eddie, but I want to show you where it all began. In a rural part of an already rural Orangeburg County, South Carolina, lies the towns of Utahville, Holly Hill, and Vance. The area between them is an ocean of cotton, soybeans, and corn. This is where Eddie Sweat would come into the world on a blistering August day in 1939. Eddie would be one of nine siblings to sharecropper parents and with the height of Jim Crow, to say there was no opportunity for Eddie is an understatement. When Eddie was not working the fields with his parents, he would find himself at the local training track. And where it would all begin for Eddie is right here, at what was formerly known as the Branch Dell Racetrack, today known as the Holly Hill Training Track. Eddie, as a teenager with a lot of other neighborhood kids, would peer through the fences watching the horses work. Up until one day when Lucian Lauren would find him and offer him a job. The wide-eyed and youthful teenage Eddie would peer through the fence, more than likely near this spot along the road of the racetrack. Lucian Lauren would at first offer him part-time employment, and then at the age of 18, in 1957, Eddie would accept full-time employment as a stable hand and groom. But it wouldn't take long for Eddie and Lucian to get a taste of success on the racetrack. Quill, a two-year-old filly trained by Lucian Lauren and cared for by Eddie Sweat, would win the Gardenia Stakes and the Matron Stakes and be the American champion two-year-old filly in 1958. Eddie was proving himself to be a more than capable groom. He would meticulously make notes about everything he saw going on with the horse and passed that information on to exercise riders and Lucian Lauren alike. Eddie also had a habit of jotting down anything you told him as far as directions went, so he could be sure that he would never forget. In 1966, Sweat would be part of Lauren Stable's first American Classic win, when Amber Royd won the Belmont Stakes. But it would be some six years later when Eddie Sweat would get national attention, and it all came from a young sports writer by the name of William Knack. Knack would spend hours with Sweat in and out of Lauren Stables in 1972 and 1973 with River Ridge and Secretariat. All the connections around River Ridge and Secretariat would receive massive national and international attention, but it was Eddie who would become something like a folk hero to those on the backside of the track. Eddie would be featured in Sports Illustrated, Ebony and Jet magazines, and for good reason. Not only was he the groom of one of the most famous horses of all time, but if you ask Ron Tricot, Hall of Fame jockey and jockey for Secretariat, and Lucian Lauren, trainer for Secretariat, and Eddie's employer, they would both tell you that they had never seen a groom more in touch with horses. Eddie loved his job, Eddie loved the horses, and Eddie knew he had a connection with the horses. Eddie was quoted as saying, I think they'll take me to my grave with a pitchfork in my hand and a rub rag in my back pocket. 
and even today you'll be hard pressed to find a photograph of Secretariat or River Ridge without Eddie being in the picture. Lucian Lorne would retire and leave his son Roger to take over his operation. Roger saw Eddie as an asset like Lucian did and while Roger made some changes, Eddie was not one of them. In 1984, once again, Eddie would receive considerable national attention with Chief's Crown, a cult that would win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and voted the Eclipse Award for American two-year-old cult. In 1985, Chief's Crown would be the betting favorite for all three of the Triple Crown races. Going into the 90s, Eddie would step away from horse racing, and by the mid-90s, Eddie's health would start to fail him. Eddie would battle leukemia, keeping it a secret from most people, until close to the end of his life when he would make mention that he wished to be buried back in South Carolina. In 1998, leukemia would take Eddie from us. He would die in Queens, New York, where he made his home, just a short drive from Belmont Park. He would be laid to rest at the Rock Hill AME Church in Vance, South Carolina, which is a literal three-minute car ride from the training track that started it all. It is memorialized in many forms. There is a life-size statue of him leading Secretariat with Ron Turcotte to the winner's circle, winning the 1973 Kentucky Derby that is on display at the Kentucky Horse Park. Eddie would also be the subject of a book in 2006 titled The Horse God Built, Secretariat, His Groom, and Their Legacy. Standing at only 5 foot 6, Eddie had the personality and the work ethic of someone twice his size, and I can almost guarantee you that if there is an afterlife and Secretariat is there, then Eddie is his groom.